What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the Network Plus N10 007 certification. So let's get into it. In this video, you're going to learn about the OSI model and the TCP IP stack. So let's talk about the OSI model. This stands for the Open Systems Interconnection Model, and this is a conceptual model that characterizes and standardizes the communication functions of a telecommunication or computing system without regard to its underlying internal structure and technology. Its goal is the interoperability of diverse communication systems with standard communication protocols. The model partitions the flow of data in the communication system into seven abstract Extraction layers from the physical implementation of transmitting bits across a communication medium to the highest level representation of data of a distributed application. Each intermediate layer serves a class of functionality to the layer above it and is served by the layer below it. And classes of functionality are realized in software by standardized communication protocols. Let's talk about layer one or the physical layer. So the physical layer is responsible for the transmission and reception of unstructured raw data between the device and the physical transmission medium. It converts the digital bits into electrical, radio, or optical signals. Layer specification define characteristics such as voltage layers, the timing of voltage changes, physical data rates, maximum transmission distances, modulation scheme, channel access method, and physical connectors. This includes the layout of pins, voltage, line impedance, cable specification, signal timing, and frequency for wireless devices. Bit rate control is done at the physical layer and may define the transmission mode as simplex, half duplex, and full duplex. The components of a physical layer can be described in terms of a network topology and physical layer specifications are included in the specifications for the ubiquitous Bluetooth, Ethernet, and USB standards. Next, let's talk about layer two or the data link layer. So the data link layer provides node to node data transfer, which is a link between two directly connected nodes. It detects and possibly corrects errors that may occur in the physical layer. It defines the protocol to establish and terminate a connection between two physically connected devices. It also defines the protocol for flow control between them. And the IEEE 802 divides the data link into two sub layers. You have the media access control layer. This is responsible for controlling how devices in the network gain access to a medium and permission to transmit data. And then you have the logical link layer. This is responsible for identifying and encapsulating network layer protocols and controls error checking and frame synchronization. Layer three are the network layer. So the network layer is primarily concerned with forwarding data based on logical addresses. The network layer provides the functionality and procedural means of transferring packets from one node to another connected in different networks. A network is a medium to which many nodes can be connected on which every node has an address and which permits nodes connected to it to transfer messages to other nodes connected to it by merely providing the content of a message and the address of the destination node and letting the network find the way to deliver the message to the destination node, possibly routing it through intermediate nodes. If the message is too large to be transmitted from one node to another on the data link layer between these nodes, the network may implement message delivery by splitting messages into several fragments at one node, sending the fragments independently, and then reassembling the fragments at another node. It may but does not need to report delivery errors and message delivery at the network layer is not necessarily guaranteed to be reliable. A network layer protocol may provide reliable message delivery, but it need not do so. And the network layer is responsible for a variety of tasks such as logical addressing, switching such as packet switching and circuit switching, message switching, route discovery and selection, connection services, flow control, which is also known as congestion control and packet reordering. 
Let's talk about layer four or the transport layer. So the transport layer acts as the dividing line between the upper layers and the lower layers of the OSI model. The transport layer provides the functionality and procedural means of transferring variable length data sequences from a source to a destination host while maintaining the quality of service functions. The transport layer controls the reliability of a given link through flow control, segmentation, desegmentation, and error control. Some protocols are state and connection oriented. This means that the transport layer can keep track of the segments and retransmit those that fail delivery. The transport layer also provides the acknowledgement of the successful data transmission and sends the next data if no errors occurred. And the transport layer creates segments out of the messages received from the application layer and segmentation. This is the process of dividing a long message into smaller messages and two common transport transport layer protocols are you have TCP or transmission control protocol. This is a connection oriented transport protocol and you have UDP or user datagram protocol. And this is a connection list transport protocol. And then we have two common flow control protocols, which are windowing. So TCP communication uses windowing in that one or more segments are sent at one time and a receiver can attest to the receipt of all the segments in a window with a single single acknowledgement and then you have buffering. So a device such as a router uses a chunk of memory, also known as a buffer or a queue to store segments. If bandwidth is not available to send the segments, a queue has a finite capacity, however, and can overflow or drop segments in case of sustained network congestion. Layer five or the session layer. So the session layer controls the dialogues or connections between computers. It establishes, manages, and terminates the connections between the local and remote application. It provides for full duplex, half duplex, or simplex operation and establishes procedures for checkpointing, suspending, restarting, and terminating a session. In the OSI model, this layer is responsible for gracefully closing a session. This layer is also responsible for session checkpointing and recovery recovery, which is not usually used in the internet protocol suite. The session layer is commonly implemented explicitly in application environments that use remote procedure calls. In the modern TCP IP system, the session layer is non-existent and simply part of the TCP protocol. And the functions of the session layer include the following. You have setting up the session. So this checks the user's credentials, such as a username and password. It assigns numbers to a session's communication flow to uniquely find one another. It negotiates services needed during the session, and it negotiates which devices will begin to send data. You have maintaining a session. This refers to transfer of data, reestablishing a disconnected session, and acknowledgement of receipt of data. And you have tearing down of a session. This is where a session can be disconnected based on agreements of the devices in the session, or they can be torn down because one party just simply disconnects intentionally or unintentionally. Layer six, the presentation layer. So the presentation layer handles formatting the data being an exchange and securing the data with encryption. The presentation layer establishes context between application layer entities in which the application layer entities may use different syntax and semantics if the presentation service provides a mapping between them. If a mapping is available, presentation protocol data units are encapsulated into session protocol data units and passed down the protocol state. Stack. This layer provides independence from data representation by translating between application and network formats. The presentation layer transforms data into the form that the application accepts. This layer formats data to be sent across a network, which is sometimes called the syntax layer and can include compression functions. And functions of the presentation layer include data formatting. So some applications might format text using ASCII while other applications might format text using EBC DIC or extended binary coded decimal interchange code. The presentation layer handles formatting the text in a format that allows compatibility between the communicating devices. And then the other function is encryption. To add a layer of security for data transmission, encryption is used to scramble data that will make it impossible for a third party to decrypt the transmission. And then we have layer seven or the application layer. 
So the application layer is the OSI layer that is closest to the end user, which means both the OSI application layer and the user interact directly with the software application. This layer interacts with software applications that implement a communicating component. Such application programs fall outside of the scope of the OSI model. Application layer functions typically include identifying communication partners, determining resource availability, and synchronizing communication. When identifying communication partners, the application layer determines the identity and availability of communication partners for an application with data to transmit. The most important distinction in the application layer is the distinction between the application entity and the application. So for example, a reservation website might have two application entities, one using HTTP to communicate with its users and one for a remote database protocol to record the reservations. Neither of these protocols have anything to do with the reservations. That logic is in the application itself. The application layer has no means to determine the availability of resources in the network. And some of the functions of the application layer are as follows. You have application services. So examples of these services may include file sharing and email, and then you have service advertisements. So some application services, they periodically send out advertisements such as network printers, making their availability known to other devices on the network. Now here is an easy way to remember the OSI model layers. You could just simply remember this phrase called, please do not throw sausage pizza away. This begins at layer one and it goes all the way up through layer seven. So please do not throw sausage pizza away. That is the easiest way to remember the layers and the correct order of the OSI model. And let's talk about the TCP IP stack. So the TCP IP stack is a more relevant model for network designers and administrators to reference, which was developed by the United States Department of Defense. The TCP IP stack has only four defined layers as opposed to seven layers from the OSI model. The TCP IP stack allows for network designers and administrators to more easily categorize a given networking technology into a specific layer. And the four layers of the TCP IP stack are as follows. You have the network interface layer. This maps to layers one and two are the physical and data link of the OSI model. You have the internet layer. This maps to layer three or the networking layer of the OSI model. And it focuses on IP as the protocol to be routed through a network. You have transport. This maps to layer four or the transport layer of the OSI model. And the two primary protocols found here are TCP and UDP. And the you have application. This maps to layers five through seven, which are the session, presentation, and application layers of the OSI model. All right, now it's time for some of this wonderful check on learning. So the first question is, layer six of the OSI model is also referred to as what? Is it the application layer, the presentation layer, the session layer, or the transport layer? And the correct answer is, this is the presentation layer layer. Next question. Which of the terms listed below refers to the OSI network layer? Is it layer two, five, three, or four? Four. So which one of these is the network layer for the OSI model? And the correct answer is layer three is the network layer for the OSI model. Next question. Which of the following protocols reside at the application layer in the OSI model? Would it be ATM, HTTP, FTP, IP, SSH, or TCP, UDP? So which of these, and there's multiple answers here, which of these resides at the application layer in the OSI model? And the correct answer is... HTTP, FTP, and SSH. These are all specific protocols that run on the application layer of the OSI model. So in summary, we've talked about the OSI model and the TCP IP stack. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the Network Plus N10-007 certification. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, Peace.